What's going on, Boss Nation? Boss Fister here, coming at you with another episode of How to Stream Like a Boss. Today, I'm going to teach you how to set up your interactive soundboard on Beam. Alright guys, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, Leviathan 5's GitHub page, which I will link for you in the description, uh, and this is where you're going to download the Beam Soundly Interactive Board. Uh, this is how the buttons know what sounds to play when somebody presses them, and it actually connects to your computer just like it would any other interactive game on Beam. What we're going to do is you're going to come to this page, you're going to choose which file fits you. There is two for Linux and two for Windows. As of right now, it does not support Mac. I do not know if Leviathan has any plans to support Mac. Um, so unfortunately right now it's Windows and Linux only. Uh, now I am a 64-bit system, so I'm going to choose the bottom one here. If you're a 32-bit system, you're going to choose that here. Uh, and the same thing for Linux. 32 is at the top, 64 bits at the bottom. So we're going to click that and it should bring up down the download thing down here. Once that's done, you're going to click on it. All right, so once you get it downloaded, uh, you're gonna to go to your downloads, uh, find the Beam Soundly Interactive zip file. You're gonna right click on it, go to 7-zip or whatever program you're using to unzip it, and you're going to extract to Beam Soundly Interactive. Now, you can extract it wherever you like, it's personal preference, uh, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to extract it directly to the same file. Now here we go, it should pop up right there. You're gonna double click this, double click again. Now you should see a .exe file called Beam Soundly Interactive and it should have this little Beam uh, logo next to it. So you're gonna double click that to open it. All right, so it's gonna bring this up. Now it's gonna start off with the status board and it's gonna give you some errors and stuff saying, oh, it's not working. Uh, don't worry, we'll get that all set up. So. You're gonna come to soundboard. Now, I've already got mine set up, so it's already got all the sounds. Now, I'm going to leave a link in the description for the website that I get all of my sounds from. It's extremely easy to use. So you've got all these different sounds that you can use and you name them uh, something that pertains to what the sound is uh, to make it easier for you to remember. So like the, this one's called Ha Ha. Ha Ha! It's that simple. It's uh, Nelson from The Simpsons, obviously. Uh, so just nice, fun little sounds and you can choose up to 16 different sounds. So, uh, they're gonna be named uh, 0 through 15, and you just want to click here to rename it. Uh, like I said, you're gonna click Save, and then to upload the actual sound, you're just gonna click on the Load button here. Uh, my sounds are in my downloads, so I've got all these different sounds here. Uh, you're gonna select the sound that you want, and I believe it it uh, takes all different kind of sounds files. So OGG, MP3, WAV files, all of those uh, seem to work so far. I haven't had any problem with them at all. So, all right, so once you do that for all 16 sounds, uh, then your soundboard is set up. The actual sounds themselves are good to go. Next, you're gonna go to settings. Now, uh, here you have to put in your Beam username and your password. Now, you're gonna go ahead and uh, create a profile uh, there's one that'll say it will say default when you first start. Uh, I've already created the soundboard one So you can create multiple ones to have multiple soundboards um, once you get into uh, Playing different games if you only play one game and you only want one soundboard Then you should be good to go if you would like to create a separate soundboard for every game you play Obviously, it's a lot of extra work But it could be very beneficial for you and your viewers to give them that a uh, little bit of variety uh, But once again totally up to you now the Cooldown, uh, you can set this so that all the buttons have a global cooldown, meaning that each button, ha once you press it, there will be a cooldown of whatever you set here uh, if this global button is selected. So if you want it to be 15 seconds, you would do 15,000. Now it is in milliseconds, so make sure that you remember that um, 15,000 is 15 seconds. So that will set the cooldown rate for every button to 15 seconds. Uh, I keep this at zero because I like having different cooldowns for different buttons, so uh, I have deselected that. Alright, so once we're done with that, you're going to go to your Beam profile. So you need to go to beam.pro and log in, and then up here in the top right hand corner, you're going to see a little picture with your avatar. You're going to click on that, okay? It's going to bring up this side menu. 
and you're going to come down here to the bottom and this middle tab that says dev lab you're going to click on that and it's going to bring you to this page so now what you need to do is go to create a game you're going to see that it should be empty here and you're going to click on next to my games there's a plus button you're going to click on that we're going to name this soundboard create game then what you're going to do is going to click on control editor alright so that's going to bring you to this page guys uh, it's got a whole lot going on and it seems a little confusing and whatnot uh, but bear with me it's not that complicated it is a little bit of work though so bear with me um, so the first thing you want to do is over here you're going to click the new button and you want to do that 16 times because you've got 16 different buttons so now it starts at zero and goes uh, up from there so 14 one more so you want to have number 15 through zero now what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on this little drop down arrow on each one and you need to have holding and frequency selected for every single button if even one button doesn't have both of those selected it will not work so be aware of that guys if you have trouble later on uh, and the board's not working for some reason double check to make sure holding and frequency are both selected so right here you're gonna have button text now what you need to do is that needs to be the same name as your button right here okay so for number one we have the hot gay so the first one is there you go now so you can set keyboard triggers um, if you are if you want people to you to be able to use hotkeys to set off these commands uh, I don't recommend this unless you are actually building a game interface uh, as far as the soundly uh, soundboard is concerned people might start to get a little upset if they're hitting keys and accidentally setting off sounds and using their sparks uh, when they didn't mean to so be very careful with that uh, help text is something that'll show up when you hover over the button so you can make that uh, whatever you want to say if you don't have to add anything if you don't want to uh, the next thing is the spark cost this is how many sparks people will have to spend in order to activate the button for your channel it's up to you to decide how many sparks you want to charge uh, do most of your users have thousands of sparks uh, or are you a fairly new channel with a new community that has you know only a couple hundred sparks it's really something you're gonna have to decide on your own uh, I do recommend if you are a very interactive channel and you want people to be able to do this on a fairly regular basis keep them uh, low but I would start around the 50 range to a hundred because uh, you just don't want it to get spammed over and over and over and take away from the quality of the stream uh, so we're gonna set this one to 50 and then we're gonna go down to cooldown now going back to the uh, soundboard remember we have global cooldown unselected so what you want to do is set a specific cooldown for each button now for this one it's a fairly simple short uh, kind of uninvasive one so we want to set the cooldown pretty low and I'm gonna make it 10 seconds now remember this is milliseconds so 10 seconds would be 10,000 so keep that in mind guys now once that's done you can click the little drop down box here to close it and you're gonna click here and drag over to the board over here alright so once you have the button moved over you can resize the button like this dragging it up and down and such uh, I believe the maximum size for a button is 4x2. Um, I haven't been able to drag it any larger than that, so uh, if you are able to do that, uh, don't come to me and be like, oh, hey, I was able to do that, you're wrong. <laughs> uh, I haven't been able to, so you know that may change in the future, I'm not sure. Uh, for the large grid, a 2x2 button is recommended. That's probably going to be your best bet, uh, but you can make them 2x1, you know, two, one by three, it's up to you to arrange them how you see fit. Uh, but like I said, I recommend starting out with the two by two option. So you're gonna have to pl individually place each button. Uh, now there has been times where you, I've had trouble uh, moving the actual button itself and resizing it sometimes. If that happens, what you wanna do is just go ahead and click the save button and refresh the page that generally fixes any problems you might be having so uh, you can move the buttons once you've uh, made them 
So you can do like that. It's super easy, really nice way to organize your buttons and to get them how you want them to look. So uh, real quick, I'm gonna cut and come back once I've got all the buttons named and placed. All right, so once you've got all of your buttons named and placed and dragged over onto the grid, uh, this is one example of how you can arrange them. Uh, obviously the big two by three squares are my two biggest buttons, you know, the two most expensive ones, and then the ones on tops are the generally the cheaper ones. It's a good way to organize by price um, and by, you know, how big of a sound it is, you know, how long it is, how uh, awesome it is, that kind of thing. So you can ar arrange them however you want. Um, this is one of my favorite configurations right here. Uh, so that's the large grid. Now, that's for uh, PCs, TVs, things like that. Now, there are two other grids, and this is where a lot of people uh, seem to uh, miss, and they wonder, why don't my buttons work on mobile? Why don't people on tablets or certain computers see them? Uh, this is why. You have to set your buttons up on all three grids. The medium grid is for tablets and for smaller screens, like uh, I've seen a Chromebook uh, have the medium grid uh, and tablets and things like that. And then the small grid is for mobile users. So you have to set those up accordingly and it works just the same way. You drag things over, you can resize them uh, and make it fit how you want. So uh, we're gonna cut one more time. I'm gonna get those set up and show you guys what it looks like. All right, so once you've got all of your buttons placed, uh, it should look something similar to this. Well, once again, you can arrange them how you see fit, but these are good uh, layouts that you guys are welcome to copy. Uh, everything fits fairly nicely. Um, so this is the mobile one. This is the tablet and medium sized screen one. And here's your large PC one. Um, these are pretty good layouts. Uh, they look really nice on the actual profile. And to give you a good idea, um, you can click preview controls. Now that will show you exactly what they're going to look like. Now I have them all set at 50 sparks for right now. Uh, that was just for the demonstration. Uh, obviously you want each one to be different prices. You can have some that are the same price if you want, but uh, you want to make some of them a little bit harder to get and a little bit bigger, a little, you know, maybe longer, things like that. So, um, you know, you like I said, you can arrange them how you see fit, but uh, these are good uh, layouts that work fairly well and they look really good too. So. There's a quick rundown of how each uh, grid should look and how to do them. So once you're done with that, you want to come up here and click save. Please make sure you save um, because that's a lot of work and uh, that took me to do all of those. It takes about 30 minutes probably, uh, I would say. All right, the next step is right here where it says report interval. You wanna change that to 100. Click out of the box there. now. Up here, there's a little share icon in between the uh, gear and the trash can. You want to click on that. It says share version. It's going to bring up this dialog window, and you want to click on the middle option, which is anyone with version ID and the right code can play your game. Uh, so you're going to click that. Now, up here at the top, the last thing it should say is this version's ID is, and then whatever your version ID is, mine happens to be 8762, uh, and then there's a share code down here. Uh, so you need to remember those, all right? All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on your search down here. You're gonna type percent sign, app data, percent sign. Select your app data folder right here by double clicking. And then you're gonna find the Beam Soundly Interactive right here. Double click that. You wanna double click the version.json file. Now, if it comes up with how do you want to open this file, you just click more apps. You can use notepad. So you open this up. Now, it gives you this right here. So you need to make sure the version and the share code both match what you've got over here. If you see here, the version number is 8762. And the version number here is 8534. So we're going to change that to 8762 and the share code here which we're going to move this out of the way for a second you can click this little button right here it'll automatically copy that for you bring this back highlight this and control v to paste or right click and paste so there you go 
So there's the version and the code is set. Now you want to click on file and make sure you click save. So save that. Go ahead and close it. Close that. Now, what we're going to do, uh, once again, make sure that you save everything just to double check. You're going to click up here. You're going to go to your channel right here. And you're going to click Go Interactive. So to bring this up, down here you will see, you should see your soundboard or whatever you named it. Click that. Click Start Playing. Alright, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the soundboard again. <clears throat> and you're going to go to Status and click Connect. Now, if you did everything correctly, it should say connected with user count zero, one. If anybody is lurking in your channel, uh, it'll say the user count basically showing how many people are in the channel at the time. So, you're gonna leave that like that, move it back out of the way, and we're gonna refresh this page and see why it's not working. There we go, okay, so now, on your channel, you will see that the soundboard is now there. Uh, it'll show up for mobile, it will show up on tablets and everything. Now. Uh, you can toggle controls down here, so if you, obviously, you don't necessarily want to see the soundboard, so you can toggle that on and off with this button right here. Uh, now, this will continue running even if you're not streaming, so I highly recommend either close the program on your computer or hit exit interactive mode when you're not streaming. That way, users don't accidentally press the button and waste their sparks uh, and get upset, you know. So, when you're done streaming, you just hit exit interactive mode and you're back to normal. And that's all there is to it, guys. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope this was an informative video. If you have any questions, if I didn't cover something that uh, you wanted to know, or if you're having trouble, please be sure to leave a comment below. Hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Everybody have an awesome day, guys. Stay safe. Peace.